Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dungeons and Dragons with Demi and the gang, the boys. The boys are here. We're missing one of them, the dude at the bail due to real life circumstances. Rest in peace. But the other three members are here, so we're gonna kick it back up. Anyone want to do a quick recap, or we're gonna skip it this time? <laughs> I'm assuming everybody's <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> Uh, I know what one of us Sure, does. okay. Um, let me see if I can recall it all, and then you can fill in the blanks if I fuck anything up. But <clears throat> This one and the others came back up from investigating and spoke with the town guard. These men in big fancy suits of armor, not really. Some of them wore armor, other ones wore, wore, rag, wore rags. They stopped Kothar from finishing his food. They said it was a crime scene. Kothar does not know what crime is. But because the green one told him not to get in the way, he did not. The guards brought us to their home, a hovel with bars. It was cold, the floor was wet, Kothar slept there. There was a another being in the cell, and a soft one. The other being was furry, and looked like a cat. A tall cat. Kothar shared his food with that one, the cat one. It was smelly. Kothar came back upstairs in the morning. The green one and the fancy one were talking to other soft ones about things. We all split up. This one went with the green one and the furry one. The fancy one went with one of the fancy one's friends to do things. This one does not know what. <laughs> Though they talked about a temple, whatever that is, and a goddess, whatever that is. This one, the green one, and the furry one went to speak with the mayor, which is apparently important. We spoke with the mayor. There was a man in armor hiding behind the curtain. Kothar smelled him and found him. Then we all talked together. The mayor told us to go visit a being in the woods that she was worried about. This one does not know what worry means, but the others wanted to go, so Kothar went. There was a big furry creature in the woods. We found the tree. Kothar ate. Well, this one ate some of the food that was there in the tree. The other ones flipped through pages of something called books. Paper. This one does not understand. There was a big furry creature that came out of the woods. The green one told it to leave and it did and did not come back. We, th these ones, d this one and his friends decided to sleep next to the tree that belonged to the, the thing in the woods, the being. There was a bird on a tree. Kothar was hungry on watch. This one grabbed the bird and when this one blinked, the bird turned into a pointy-eared one that was female. We fell. We struggled. The pointy-eared one turned into one of the revered scaled ones. And then the furry one punched it in the nose. Then the revered scaled one turned back into the pointy-eared one. Got upset. Went back into her house found out that Kothar had eaten her food and became even more upset. This one, the green one, and the furry one left before there was violence. That is all this one remembers. Yep, and because we split off into two groups towards the beginning of the session, there was another story unbeknownst to Kothar. You want to talk about that, Mitchell? Well, of course. After uh, after an early morning's breakfast, the the Lord Rural 
slid off from the party with his, um, with his guide. Ugh, what is his name? Liam. They went to check out the, uh, the temple, which had, um, oddly barred its gates, but, uh, to many, but, um, right now held knowledge. Knowledge that could be of use. We go there, there are guards with dogs, as well as barred gates. They're open to us, and we enter the place. After a moment of listening to a sermon, we speak to the head priestess, who points us the way to the library. Through many locked doors and through many halls with uh, ornate statues, we enter the library and do some reading. The particular book that um, may be of use to us, some, some book on serpents, is nowhere to be found. We decide to leave. We um, we can't seem to we can't seem to find it, so we leave. And as we leave, Reginald gets curious and he checks a door at the bottom of the hallway. As he goes for the handle, as he touches the handle to open it, some of the statues shed their stone and reveal their true form as suits of animated armor that come to you know. Pound original lame into the dust. Uh, they make a tactical retreat through the church and through the exit, which has to be forced open into the uh, and they enter into the uh, the courtyard area, where the two um, the two pairs of guards with dogs are yeah, they are unleashed and attempt to attack original. They're swiftly put to sleep and they simply walk out the door and head to the mayor to report what happened. From there we learn that the, the captain of the guard hasn't been doing his job, and that the mayor's magical advisor might be behind all of this. I think that is where we stop. Great! Well then, that's enough of uh, that recapping. Let's kick it off. We'll uh, rejoin our camping group as they sleep the night away. Currently, we've got our nice little lion man on watch while the other two rest for the night. So far, it's been quite uneventful compared to the earlier dealings of the day. Ronark himself turns and turns and tosses in his sleep, haunted by dreams. The night passes and day breaks. You're still in the swamp. A nice, decent time away from uh, your destination from earlier, the treehouse where the, the woman was living. Leo uh, wakes you up from your dreams, and there we are. What do you guys want to do? <clears throat> I don't know how the rest of you slept last night. But my sleep was fitful. I don't know if that elf in there has cast a curse on us, or if there was some other foul play at work. This one slept well, but this one is now hungry. Yes, well. We should eat, but we should attempt to make contact with the resident of that house. I believe we have some explaining to do. This one gets the sense that that one will not be interested in speaking with us again. Oh. I feel we must try.
but green one the pointy eared one was not pleased with being punched having the pointy eared <laughs> one's food eaten and then having demands made to speak with her i believe this one believes if we go back we may be killed perhaps eaten uh, yes, well, Leo, I'm going to need you to return to the city and let the mayor know what took place out here this evening. She should at least be aware of the status of the job she's placed on us. She and I, uh, we don't see eye to eye. If I go there alone, she'll probably accuse me of killing you, too. Uh, Just looking for reasons to attack me, probably. This one thinks we should all go back. This pointy-eared one is not going to bother with us again. Well, very well. We could at least let the mayor know. She wanted us to make sure she was okay. Well, she is doing just fine out here. As strong as ever, I would assume. This one thinks the mayor was more concerned about the pointy-eared one causing problems with the mayor's tribe. But the pointy-eared one does not seem like the sort to cause trouble with a tribe. In fact, the opposite. Yes, you're correct, Kothar. She seems to want to be left alone. She does not want to bother anyone. Yes. Very well, then. You give good advice. We shall return and inform the mayor. Okay. So you guys pack up your belongings and you make your trip back to the village of Orlane. It takes a little bit, so we'll cut over the Mitchell while we uh, while you make your trek. Actually, give me a one of you. Give me a one d twelve roll. Sure. Oh, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> they arrive tomorrow. Okay, I'll get back to that later. But uh, Mitchell. Uh, previously, you had been with uh, Mayor Eleanor and her bodyguard and Liam discussing your adventures at the Temple of America, your findings and your notes, and just uh, one of your ideas about the involvement of her consultant. Indeed. Right. Oh, God. Where's your... Dropping a ball already. I'm looking for the map. Get it together, Jimmy. There we are. Got it together. We're good. Everything is all right. So you spend the night talking away. Uh, do you decide to spend the night here? Percival has made sure to lock it down since you spoke of intru uh, the guards at the church attacking you. If um, if Eleanor would mind, yes, he'll uh, he'll stay the night here. Uh, someone of your status is welcome in her abode, of course. She gives you uh, the comforts, your necessities, a nice mat to sleep on, a nice fluffy pillow. Liam is also invited. Excellent. Uh, Reginald will take the liberty of uh, ensuring the security of the place by alarming this area. Okay. So let me cast a spell, sorry. He'll, he'll do it uh, twice or three times, however many times it takes to uh, cover the surface area. Understood. You set up alarms to wrap before heading to bed, or meditation in your case. Um, also, give me a 1v12 real quick. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Uh, someone knocks on the door sometime throughout the night. It just appears to be a common or a complaint for the mayor. They have a quick conversation about it. Everything's resolved. No issues. 
uh, daybreak, yeah, it's uneventful. You finish your meditation feeling well rested, your spell slots returned, your health returned to the full if you uh, took anything, which I don't believe you did. Uh, no, sir. But he will cast armor. It lasts a good eight hours, so I'll do it first thing to get that shield up. Yep, after stretching from your meditation, you wave your hand in front of you, your clothes briefly glow as you're protected with magic armor around you. Um, Liam was awake during this and just gawks at your magical expertise in awe and shock and oh boy, he just can't get enough of you. <laughs> uh, tell me, Liam, what, uh, what school of magic did you pursue? And uh, he is look on his face. He, he seems to realize something that he doesn't know exactly what you specialize in, so he's afraid. Um... Well, Sir Reginald, you know, I, I dabble here and there, <laughs> but uh, by chance, what what field do you specialize in? Uh, mine is an abjuration protection. Oh, <laughs> what a coincidence. Myself, I, uh, I also <laughs> happen to be an abjurist. <laughs> I'd leave it. Reggie leaves a lot of things. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He, um... What's a basic cantrip and abjuration? He, he casts... Blade Ward. Blade Ward. Which he just so happens to know is a cantrip. Uh, to display his uh, mastery of abjuration. Well, so, uh, what do you think, sir? That's excellently performed. Where Where is your arcane ward? Uh, well, you know... <laughs> Um, the mayor at this point is well awake. Sir Percival, ever watchful, is just listening to your conversation. Uh, he goes over to mayor and is like, well, uh, shouldn't we be opening up? I think, uh, the people are going to be expecting you soon. Maybe we should head off, right? Dodging your line of questioning. And she says, uh, well, what was her voice? It was probably just like a, well, I suppose, um, What's our plan of action? She turns to you, Reginald. She, she seems to trust you very much. Well, what is the uh, what is the punishment for an assault on a woman's person? Sorry, can you uh, say that again? Oh yes. Well, what is the punishment for assault on a woman's person? I'm not catching the last couple of words you're saying. Oh, am I going real quiet? Yeah, uh -huh. you're going real quiet. Let me back up and back in. Uh, he asks, well, what is the, uh, what is the punishment for assault on a woman's person? Well, if, <laughs> I'm not accusing you of lying, but of course there are procedures in place. Um, we must do a proper investigation. We must talk with our local constable, search the premises. The matters of the church, the Temple of America, are a bit tricky. They have a lot of sway over this village, but I'm sure they'll comply. If they have nothing to hide, of course. Of course, of course. Anything that grants us access. Yes. So I believe, even though he does not trust me, we should go to him for this matter. Uh, as you finish your nodding and uh, perhaps prepare to disembark or uh, embark on your journey to find a constable, uh, you hear a, a ringing of a bell. It's coming towards from sorry, it's coming from town square, the center of town. I wonder what has happened. Shall we investigate? Uh, the mayor seems to be confused about the matter of the ringing, she says. That certainly isn't something I was told about. And uh, she turns to her protector, and he nods in agreement and grabs his weaponry. Eleanor, um, I haven't noticed your arms as well. Where are they? Uh, she, 
she flashes you a smile and uh, she's wearing multiple layers of clothing right so she uh she reveals that under her her clothes that she is fully armed and well protected uh, excellent i assure you i never leave the house without protection and then uh sir percival sort of grunts and she turns and she looks at him and she smiles a true american I feel like you've been waiting to use that. <laughs> right? So then, shall we uh, investigate? The bells are still ringing. Indeed. Right. So, the other group, as you're uh, approaching the town of Orlane, you yourselves also hear the ringing of bells. And uh, in the distance, you can see many townsfolk gathering at the square. Hmm. I do wonder what that is. Maybe a visit by the mayor or important information given out to the residents. Why did the soft ones make such loud noises? As well. It is their form of communication. It's how they let the large group know when they form into large colonies like this, they need ways of communicating, ways of alerting everyone. That loud bell is just one of those ways. But could not the soft ones be brought in by the loud noise? Like, like a trap for slaughter? Well, in that case, you could just consider it a dinner bell. This one does not think he could eat that many soft ones. Well, in any case, we should be off. Let's find out what's going on. Yes. Okay, you entered a village. It's very easy to tell where the bell is coming from, where the town square is, due to the commotion it is uh, calling in. As you get closer, you see several knights or guards that you remember perhaps from your uh, your stay at the constables chambers um, they seem to be sort of surrounding a large group of people i'll uh, take you to that screen real quick and i'll put your tokens on don't worry about it This looks ominous. So the three of you enter the town. You, you see all this before you. Uh, Sir Reginald and his company also see this, but they're not on your side. They're coming in from the opposite end. Okay. Ugh. And I got you, man. Okay, awesome. So the bell is being rung by one of the guards. The crowd is forming. Uh, you guys are currently, you don't even have to sneak. Everyone is distracted by this. How do you wish to approach? Or do you just wish to listen? Um, I, I mean, I'm not trying to sneak. It's not like we're breaking into the city. It's not like we're, uh, you know, trying to do anything unlawful um there's bells being run so i'm just kind of casually walking up yeah. uh, to see what all the commotion is about yeah no reason to hide either nor would kothar be worried about all this okay yeah so the group from above approaches one of the guards uh which one are you going to you want to go this way that way I'm going uh, there, it, I guess. It, yeah, yeah. I'll just kind of walk right here and hang out by this stall while we uh, kind of watch the commotion and see what's going on. All right, so as you approach the stall, one of the guards turns and he says, Oh, it's it's you lot. Um, If you mind, would you gather in with the rest of the crowd? 
gather in with the crowd? Yes, this is uh, an announcement from our, our fearless leader. Well, we can hear your fearless leader from right here. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> he's looking a little bit nervous. Um, I would appreciate it if you, uh, you know, got in. Better to hear his words, am I right? This and one I does step not forward. want to be next to smelly soft ones. And I step forward and I kind of uh, straighten up my posture and kind of broaden my shoulders a little bit as I hover above him and I look down. I think we're going to be just fine right here. Yeah, you want to give me an intimidation roll against poor old Kurt? I'm going to sniff him. <laughs> so, uh, give me your intimidation if you want. Yeah, I'm opening it up right now. Oh man, Kurt's got balls of steel. Who was that? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. No, that's Kurt. Oh, baby. <laughs> yep. Kurt is uh, feeling pretty confident. However, you are a very large figure. He says, "Oh, like I said, I would appreciate it if you uh, complied, but you know, I'm not gonna stop you." Thank you very much. And I kind of go, I kind of uh, snort some air out of my nose. I flare my nostrils and snort some air out as I say thank you. <laughs> A little, a little green stuff gets on his armor. Sid Vicious, not Rocket. Yeah, sort of has a dejected look in his face as he wipes it off. <laughs> as you were, citizen! <laughs> he sort of steps back. Uh, real quick, we'll cut to the other guys. It's the same time. You're, you just so happen to arrive at the same time. Convenient. Uh, the mayor speaks first. He's like, uh, What is the meaning of this? She seems to be very angry. As uh, you can see, all of you can see this, the other group as well, that um, Ben and his company appear to be making an announcement. There appear to be two men uh, <laughs> that you recognize, I believe. Everyone except for Reginald, right? Yeah. I don't like Reginald. Yeah, we recognize students. this guy. Yeah. And these uh, they And Alistair recognizes the halfling. Yeah. Except he's dead. No. Oh, yeah. I don't know shit about him. So uh, these two appear to be standing with rope around their neck. A man is ready to pull a lever. He's wearing very ominous clothes. Obviously a hangman or executioner of some sort. Uh, Eleanor, forgive me, but I do not believe the captain of the guard has the, the authority to execute someone. He certainly does not. Not without running it through me first, of course. He's overstepping his boundaries. Well, what's your move? I'll back you. Of course, we simply cannot let this go. Uh, okay. So you're gonna back uh, her up. Reginald will uh, speak to Liam for a second. Liam, do you condone this? <sighs> Liam. Liam Liam seems to be very nervous. He doesn't seem to understand what's going on. You can read it on his face. It's a very open book. Mm. Let, me, let me tell you what is going to happen. It looks like your captain of the guard is about to murder two people. Uh, Sir Reginald! The, simply... Uh, it must be some sort of misunderstanding! Bannon is a... Uh, he's a nobleman. He... Ah, he signs. He's a nobleman? Well, no, he's not a nobleman. He's a noble. Like, a, he's got a cause. Right now, he's overstepping his bounds. Not only does the captain of the guard not have the right to execute, but the mayor herself would have to speak to a higher... a higher up. And then he looks... This is to treason. I'm... I'm sure there's an explanation. If we talk to him, we can we can work this out. I hope so. But I need to know you're with me, Liam. 
do we recognize the two men in the hangman's noose? Uh, you guys have dealt with them. Um, Kothar and Ronar, right? And Ballister, who's not currently with you, uh, recognizes this as the man who attempted to kill the uh, inn owner. He held a knife to his neck and got completely destroyed. Um, actually, Lord Reginald would know him too, since he blinded him and really ruined his day. Yeah. Uh, the other man, you recall, was the, the, the man who challenged Ballastar to that game with the knife and then took you upstairs and informed you that he was looking for a child and how he had poisons to sell. Mm. Uh, Lord Reginald does not know any of that. Neither does Kothar, really. You're the only one in this party who knows him. Yeah. Yes, well, in my experience with these men, neither of them are innocent. This is probably well deserved. He's just kind of saying this as an aside to Kothar. Is there a king of this area or a lord? Uh, of this of Orlean, the mayor Orlane, is in but charge. Like Orlean answers to another power. Ah, uh, yes. So, so it's like a little domain of power. It's by, yeah. owned by what's your name? Who? I don't have the at home. I'm just curious if there is a higher power. Oh, no, 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 no. He's got a name. I'm looking for it. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we, should, we should find that out through other means rather than you just telling us. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a Baron. Well, uh, Reginald would know. Probably. Yeah. Would he? Who knows? Find out next time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, uh, I don't know. You recall that he had a civil conversation. He's the one who was looking for the child. I don't know if you... If I expressed that properly, or... I remember that. I'm talking to Ronark, since he seems okay. to go like, yeah, fuck them both. Well, the other guy, he tried killing the inn owner. Or the, the, the tavern owner. Yep, this guy. He, he, yeah, he deserves to die. Okay, cool. So, yeah, anyways, the bells stop ringing... Bannon takes center stage, and he begins to uh, project his voice to the crowd. Says, "People of Orlane!" Uh, the the crowds who were previously just muttering to themselves in confusion seem to simmer down and quiet. We will not stand for these usurpers coming into our village, killing our people. And uh, some people seem confused. Um, Derek himself seems to be saying something, although he's saying it towards Bannon, and at your distance you can't hear it. He seems to be sh uh, struggling against his, uh, his bindings to no avail. The two here stand accused of murdering one Bertram B. Bailiff, owner of the Slumbering Serpent Inn, and conspiring against the people of Orlane. And as soon as he says that, Ronark turns to Kothar. It was not him who murdered the tavern keeper. It was the other one. He should not die for this. This one does not remember the tavern keeper being killed at all. Oh, yeah, okay. Real quick, just because Ghost wasn't here for that, right? He left that session. Mm -hmm. I don't believe uh So when you guys uh finished up at the cellar, at the uh the Slumming Serpent Inn cellar and you went upstairs, that's when you first met Bannon, he was surrounded by a couple of guards, people were being tied up, and uh the owner, uh Bertram, laid amongst a pile of collected dead bodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kothar tried to eat the other guy. I yeah, remember. no, I I was I just don't remember we ever established anyone killed that guy. Uh, we didn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't. We didn't find out who actually did no. it. That's that's true. So I mean, that other guy could, but I digress. Yeah, that's that's true. We uh, we did not figure out. We have not uh, learned who murdered the tavern keeper yet. We just found out that he was dead. Not who did it. So these two very well may be guilty, as far as we know. 
Ben and continues on. If you guys want to move forward, say so. Um, if not, I'll just keep going. Yeah, go ahead. Banning continues on. For these charges against this beautiful village, we bring them death. Let them be an example to ne'er-do-wells all about. We will not tolerate this any further. We will stand up for ourselves. We will reclaim our village from these happenings and shady dealings that have plagued us as of late. He speaks a great deal of irony, Eleanor. This man, this man, she seems to be very angry. She's about to charge forward and begins to pull a blade. Uh, Sir Percival grabs her by the shoulder and shakes his head. I agree with Sir Percival. The tongue here would be much more use than the sword. Then let us make ourselves known, shall we, Sir Reginald? Indeed. All right. So she begins to step forward. The entire group does. Except for uh, you're in charge of yourself, of course. Um, yeah. As she approaches, the two guards lower their weapons. They block off her. Uh, uh, they block off the staircase leading up to the stage. What is the meaning of this? I am the mayor of this village, she says. says one of them says, "Sorry, ma'am, just following orders," and the other one nods in agreement. And upon seeing Reginald walk up with the mayor and get stopped right there, uh, Ronark uh, is just a little curious about that. Mm. Something else is afoot here. Let's check to see what this is about. And he starts walking forward. Green one, where do you see feet? I'm like looking around. I'm going to start following him. Okay, one second. Then... Oh, I only do this here. Ugh, where's the sheet? Okay. What? Yeah, okay. So, as you guys walk forward, and uh, Leo also falls with you, uh, you walk by this general area, and then a fruit goes soaring towards Leo. He manages to dodge out of the way. It splatters on the ground. Uh, it's easy to tell who threw it, and he sort of walks away into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Petty. Petty. Oh, that asshole. <laughs> He's going to wind up on top of a building somehow. Leo seems to be kind of angry and begins heading in that general direction as he moves forward. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. <laughs> yeah, you guys make your way. The guard is arguing with the mayor right now. Just following, just following orders, man. She says, "I am the one who dictates who you belong." And they're just going back and forth, blah blah blah. Percival is uh, gripping his weapon. Oh ready for confrontation. Liam is still nervous. Reginald, what is the meaning of this? What is going on here? Well, it appears the captain of the guard is about to commit murder. Commit and murder? He has what? no authority to execute these prisoners. This execution isn't at the order of the mayor? Nor the lord of the region. I had no say in this. I know not of these two. Guardsmen, stand aside. Or do you too wish to be caught up in the umbrella of treason? They sort of look to each other, and then they look at Liam. Liam shrugs, and they say, uh, No can do. And... Ronark walks forward and again forces his his mass against the guard there the mayor said stand aside she is your mayor you will listen okay is that another intimidation or are you just shoving him out of the way or uh 
No, I'm going to try uh, and intimidate him. Okay, 19. I don't know if some of them whisper and some of them don't. Um, yeah. I'm going to adjust that in the character sheet. <laughs> so 19 That's and 19. That's a beefy, uh... Ties go to Defender. Yeah, we settled on that before. He seems to be bolstered by his companion and his duty as a guard of Orlane. He says, Half Orc, I demand you step aside as the proceedings conclude. Uh, Bannon's still spouting out stuff. He's reading off another list that he has written. Eleanor, may we act as, un under your authority? I'm not even going to bother with that. Kothar is going to see him talking <laughs> shit to the, the green one. You, smelly one. The one who smells of fear. If you do not step aside, this one will kill you and eat you. Straight up. That sounds like intimidation as well. Yeah. I'll just roll a d20 so you can see it. Yeah, uh, oh. that's a four. Okay. Uh, I'm actually got a negative for intimidation, believe it or not. What? Don't. Oh, <laughs> <damn it. laughs> uh, he now notices how completely surrounded he is, and you guys seem to be ganging up on him, even though he's, <laughs> he's doing his job. He. Uh... <laughs> He lowers his guard a bit, steps to the side towards his companion, who pats him on the shoulder and, like, rebukes him. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> ah! <laughs> he sort of gathers there. Now there's a little commotion. Noise is being made. The man on stage looks at you. Uh, Bannon stops his speech and steps forward. The two men... And... Uh, they, they as he's... Of, yeah. As he's uh, doing that, um, as he's doing that, uh, sorry, uh, Ronark, he uh, kind of just reaches a hand over uh, as he's walking by and touches the other uh, guard on the shoulder and looks him in the eye when he catches eyes with him and just tells him, run. And he casts a uh, command on him. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh oh. Yep, that's a wisdom save on his part, right? Yeah. What's the DC? Zero. So, D20. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The guard who is sort of trying to buff up his partner bolster his confidence, suddenly he begins to turn tail and flee. Uh, his, his friend looks on in shock and dismay. Like, this fucker. And Kothar just pushes him aside and walks up the steps. Sure I do. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and Ronar just pushes the guard aside uh, since he's already intimidated. And kind of grunts and growls at him as he pushes him aside and walks up the steps onto the platform. You uh, make your way up there. The mayor is also following suit. Liam seems to be hanging out in the background, not knowing how to go about this. Uh, Reginald, in the confusion, would like to look at the crowd and see if he notices any of the church followers or anyone that he saw before from the tavern. Um, some anyone? of them. Yeah, Suspicious. give me a. Would it be perception? This is a large crowd of people. Perception? Perception. It's either, yeah. Investigation? I per think it's investigation. Investigation? Yeah. Maybe with a disadvantage? 20, if not 14. Um, okay. There's a couple people you remember, although a lot of them are wearing similar, very raggedy clothing. They appear to be... Maybe you've seen them at the, the tavern? Uh, that's definitely a field hand you recognize over there, who was tending to the temple earlier. Mm -hmm. Would you keeps an eye on anyone he recognizes? Cause... Doesn't trust them. Believe it or not, doesn't trust them. Uh, with that investigation roll, you can also see 
far out in the crowd over there, there seems to be some sort of confrontation between. <laughs> <laughs> dumb and dumb over there. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you want a raffle? Right. <clears throat> Alright. So you note the people you believe might be suspicious. Yeah. Um, Ronark steps up on stage. Banning confronts you. His his boy by his side. Cleric of Helm. I see you've returned. Yes, we have returned, and at the behest of the mayor, the rightful delegate of this town, she would like to know who has authorized this execution. He stumbles for a second, but then he uh, gets a stern look on his face. He says, oh, did you, you introduce yourself, right? He knows your name, Ronark? Yeah, I um, Yeah, we met previously. Ronark. In, in the tavern. That woman, she cannot be trusted. I am taking control. We must stop this before it spreads. And what authority do you have to take control? I am the constable of Orlane. It's my duty to protect the people. And she is the mayor of Orlane. It the is mayor her... has betrayed us. What proof do you have of that? Uh, people in the crowd are getting very confused now. Some people are talking. You can hear murmurs. Um, you asked for proof. Now is not the time. You must trust me. If you are going to execute men, now is the perfect time for evidence of her betrayal. He, uh, he points to the man in the back. The man in the back says he was hired by the mayor. The man in the front also says he was hired by the mayor, and they are responsible for the death of Bertram. They said they were hired by the mayor. When did they tell you that? As you were torturing and beating them? Give me a perception check. To, if, unless you're just making that claim without really a... No, I'll give you a perception check. You want perception? I'll give you perception. How dare you. I'll show you uh -huh. how good I can you see. You can't handle the perception. Not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you look them over, and they both seem to be immaculate. These are the cleanest death row inmates you have ever seen. Although there's probably just something in your eye. You can't really tell that for a fact. There don't appear to be any signs of torture. So he raises his head up and kind of like uh, raises his voice. You two. Who hired you to murder the innkeeper, the tavern keeper? And he's yelling in their direction. As uh, you yell that, the crowd, let me get a roll for that. Okay, yeah. Um, so a bunch of members in the crowd hear the word murder and they begin to saunter off in their own direction. Um, some people are panicking, some people are throwing themselves back and forth. Uh, these two seem to be having some sort of argument with each other. Over here, it just gets louder and louder. You can't really make out the words. Uh, some people leave as the guards attempt to rein them in. Now appears the time, Eleanor. The iron is hot. Um, right. So you're talking to Eleanor, he's talking to Derek. Derek turns, he says, You! You know me! I... Uh, he seems to be very nervous. He's struggling against his chains. The noose around his neck tightens as he moves his neck back and forth. I... I murdered no one! And then uh, the man to the side of Bannon steps up. Uh, you, you say now seems to be the chance Eleanor attempts to get on stage herself. But the man is a... Uh, the man who you don't know, you haven't actually met him, but you knew earlier he's with Bannon. He speaks... Uh, the, uh, the ingredients in his bag it matched the cause of death of uh, one Bertram. The components he was carrying uh, are very well responsible for his death. And when we attempted to search him earlier, he refused to show us his belongings. It's like, no, that... I did no such thing, Derek says in a gravelly voice. 
did the mayor hot or did uh, sorry. Did the mayor hire you to murder the tavern keeper? He yells over at him. Uh, you're yelling at Derek, right? Yes. He says, of course not! I was hired to search for a boy, you know this! And then uh, the man in the back starts, he, he seems to be very quiet, very resigned to his fate. He's very injured from his battle with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the mayor, hearing Reginald's words that now is the time to act, steps forward, and the man who is telling you about the bag and the poisons and whatnot blocks her path. Ronark whips around and kind of grabs him on the shoulder. That is your mayor. If she wants to walk on this stage, you will allow her to walk on this stage. You're doing that to the, the blonde man? The, yeah. Hey boy, yeah. Like, uh, Monzo, wait, there's no French. Like, uh, Bannon says, she is a traitor to her name. I cannot let her speak. Uh, some of the, the other guards seem to be coming in, seeing that all this conflict is coming towards the stage. And, uh, I... This man still flees. I would hiss at the... It's like, <laughs> looking at the ones that are coming in. Yep, that's a different intimation role. So give it, uh, yeah. Oh man, time to fuck this up. <laughs> so you hiss, um, but it comes more out like a cough. Maybe something you ate yesterday is giving you a bit of a sore throat. <coughs> they are not intimidated, they, they come forth. Without proof of the mayor's involvement, without proof of these men murdering the tavern keeper they will not be executed today and he walks up and actually gives the executioner uh, a shove backwards away from the lever oh shit okay give me an athletics i believe for shoving yeah athletics opposed acrobatics athletics. don't fall what are your stats mister it's probably pretty strong being a half work but i suppose we'll see Oh, no, I'm talking oh, about the No, that guy's gonna be a brick shit house. <laughs> oh, he's gonna need to be for that one. Where is it? Yeah, okay. push him off the fucking stage. So it's acrobatics or athletics, right? Yeah. Yep. Opposed. Okay, yeah. Uh, he was actually... <laughs> he was just eyeing up his, his targets that he's... He's getting like really into it for some reason. This is his job. You gotta love it. So he doesn't notice as you shove him. He, it's a uh, two-man execution. It's pretty. It's a pretty uh, big spectacular or spectacle. He almost falls over the edge, but he rights himself and he turns to you. There's a look of disgust on his face. This is, uh, Bannon says this now. Cleric, you must not. We cannot let this go any further. We must take action. You must have a trial. Not take action. Uh, Derek is thanking you. Oh, thank you, thank you. You shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're gonna attempt to take him down, or? Um, I'm I'm just gonna prevent them from being hung right now. I'm I'm waiting for the the mayor to take control of the situation. I'm just making sure these guys don't get hung. Right. So the guards you, rally. You, Blondie, stand out of the mayor's way. Uh, the blonde man turns to Bannon. Bannon shakes his head, very resolute. Says, I cannot Resolve. do that. I do not wish to escalate the situation. Remove this man, please. And when he says, I cannot do that, Ronark unhinges his mace from his belt. You cannot do that, or you will not do that. Is that an intimidation? Uh, <laughs> roll. <laughs> we're all trying to intimidate. Yeah, this is sort of getting to it's the point. It's escalating where... a bit. Someone. This is coming up like an initiative roll. We're gonna soon, have to wrestle right? soon. All right, I have stats for this guy. I'll give him a roll. 
I'm gonna have to wrestle here shortly. Uh, eleven. He uh, he looks for a moment, and then he sort of starts to step aside. Bantam shoves him forward. He, he says, "I, I cannot," but uh, he doesn't seem to be drawing anything. Um, yeah. So Percival's making his way forward. Everyone seems to be high tense. Everyone's drawing weapons now. The guards ready their spears. Bannon pulls out a sword. This is not how it should go down. You're okay, exactly well. correct. This is not the way it should go down. It should go down with the trial, not with the murder in town square. Green, right, I'll tell you. Green what. one. Is he up there? <laughs> Green one? Yeah, I was calling out to Ronark. Yeah, I know. I'm wondering if he's responding. Yeah. Oh, is he, is he is he yelling at me from down there? Yeah. <laughs> Golthar's about to get messed up by these spearmen. No. Not at all. Golthar! Are you well down there? Yes. This one believes that nature is correct in this case. The strong decide what happens. We should be the strong. And then we have the trial. And if these weak ones get in the way, then we kill them. Well, this time, if it is the strong that decides, well then, we decide. They do not hang today. Right. Before we roll initiative, let's get one uh, persuasion check from you versus Bannon with disadvantage. <laughs> from me? Yeah, you're like, no, we gotta talk this out, you know? We cannot hang him now. But Bannon seems to be on this hype, you know? So, Pers uh... Persuasion with a disadvantage. Yes. Okay. Versus Bannon. Oh! oh that's about it. That's the... He might fail. He might crit fail. He'd still probably yeah. He could roll a one. Crit fail versus crit fail. Yeah. Oh, that he hurts. could roll one. He could roll an actual I, one. I guess. Roll lower I guess I'm not gonna persuade Wait. him. Ronark's an orc, right? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, you have half, um, half orc. Uh, half orc. Sorry, you have proficiency with intimidation. Just a heads up. Yeah, he, he had to roll persuasion though. Was... Oh, I know. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that. Um... Yeah, you're unable to do it. In fact, your words incite rage on his face as he resigns the fact that you will not agree on this matter. Just know that I do not want this to go down like this. And, alright, everyone give me initiative rolls. <laughs> it's turned to that. We tried. I'm gonna ruin this guy. Uh, would you mind adding Reggie to the roll? Or at the order? Thank you. Oh my god, I'm a, I wish I would have clicked my token for that one. Holy shit. Woo! I'll take it. The rolls are 19. Yeah, lads, boys, lads. I'm fast today. Alright, this is a lot of fucking rolls on my part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you could just have I'll them act on all the all quickly. the same initiative. Well, I guess you shouldn't, but... Yeah. Uh, the I mean, guards like, will. All the guards, yeah, can have the same initiative. Except for Kurt, he's a special guard. Yep. Kurt's a special one. He has a mic. He's a special one. He has boy. one less hit dice than the rest. <laughs> Bullshit. Whoa. He rolled a 21. That was not Kurt, that was generic guard. Rowdy. Kurt got, Kurt got a four. Hey, a boy. Lads, boys, lads. Uh, where's the other one? <laughs> guard Kurt. Don't worry, I'll send the ranks of the guards real fast for you. Just put everybody to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you can read my mind. This one believes we have a connection. <laughs> Just see so your weird demi. You think you're rolling on the same token by accident here? Ah, oh, fuck. Are the rolls coming up? You had a 21 on somebody, so remember who you had that on. They, they're, they're not coming up, but I keep seeing the number change on Bannon. So I think Bannon's probably the 21, and then... Bannon was 4 or 5. No, Bannon no. hasn't even rolled yet. He hasn't? So whoever you rolled first is 21, then there was a 
eight and a four. I think generic art is twenty one. Yeah. Kirby's yeah, I, I I got all the names in order, so I'll just put them in like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you, you have them all on the same token for what I'm looking at. So yeah. that's why I'm and if one, the, if one of the generic guards drop, just be sure not to delete this token or else you'll delete it from initiative. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> How many uh, bodies can we fit down that well over there? So, generic guards are 21. Oh, man. Uh, Bannon rolled an 18. They're going to bang on us. They're going to bang on you. <laughs> You're fancier than I am. Eleanor rolled an eight. I haven't even drawn my sword yet. Ah, uh, I have my mace out already. This, yeah. this one does not draw weapons. This one is a weapon. <laughs> and then Kurt fucking rolled a four. Uh, whatever. Kurt. Fucking. Um, that was Kurt. a joke. It doesn't even matter. Uh, I guess it does, but He's not. Gonna run away. That one will die. Will die last because he makes me laugh. <laughs> Commoners rolled a 19. Oh my gosh. What? I think I <laughs> my yeah, yeah. Hopefully they all just run. <laughs> Alright, top of the order. Let's get some combat music. Let's get beat the fuck up by <laughs> generic guards. Fucking guards. Oh, baby. Here we go. Uh, so <laughs> there goes the Reginald and Kothar are, are kind of surrounded by guards right now. Now we're fine. Well, oh, mostly Reginald. Kothar. Right. Yeah, I'm so, generic guards. guard number one, the one on top. He sees that things are going fucking haywire. He's going to attempt to... First, he's going to stab at Kothar, who's right in front of him. <laughs> uh, eight to hit? No. He, uh, sort of, he attempts to stab you with his spear. You want to describe it? You dodge it real quick while I ready up next stuff. I sort of spin sideways and sort of whip my tail at him, like I'm going to hit him, but it's just to make him back up. <laughs> Wait, does 11 hit? I forgot they have advantage because they're flanking. No. Yeah, okay, either way. You smack the his spear out of the hand with your tail. The other guard sees this and tries to get you from behind. Now you're distracted, the one below mm. you. Uh, 15? That would do it. Okay. Uh... Four... Seven piercing damage. Ugh. Um... Seeing that you're injured, this guard attempts to... Uh, grapple you and take you down. Oh. You sweet summer child. So... <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, the foolish guard, seeing that you are uh, just got stabbed in the back, tries to grab you. You manage to shove him off. He he backs up <laughs> and sighs. Uh, this guard over here, I should have given him like little color wheels. Uh, this guard is distracted by the ruckus calls over here. They seem to have moved their dispute somewhere else. <laughs> They're just fighting down the streets. <laughs> so he, he's uh, handling that. Uh, this guard is busy trying to contain the crowd. Uh, this guard over here, though, on top of the stairs, is going to rob the stairs. He's got three. He can make it to Ronark. Uh, this man charges through, uh, sort of moves the executioner's side, and he sees you, and he, he says, uh, HALT! And he begins to attempt to stab you. Stop resisting! Stop resisting! No advantage, seven to hit. Obviously not. No. You violated the law. Do you have a shield? I am the law! Uh, Bronar, do you have a shield? Uh, do I have a shield? Yeah. Uh, let me... Do I have a shield? I think you do. You do, yeah. <laughs> I thought I did. I've used it before. I have a mason shield. Either way, I don't know. He just, his, his attack bounces off of you to no avail on his part. Next up is Kothar, because you have higher decks than the commoners. Oh, fuck, thanks. That lucky me. Uh, let me see what I want to do here. You never just got your back. 
Oh yeah. And then, how long does your command run last? Just one round. One round, yeah. Yeah. So in that round, he's he's fleeing, and he's gonna come back to battle eventually. Okay. So I'm going to. Obviously, the one that stabbed me has earned my ire. Yep, that's so, the one on the bottom. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to uh, swing on him big time. Um, give him the, the unarmed strike, oh, that's better. as it is. And then follow up with a bite. If I can click on it. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, no. Okay, let's, let's do the follow up then. Starting off strong. That's, that second one's not bad. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So your first bite misses. I guess uh, the wound sort of threw you off. The second bite lands, and you take a nice chunk out of him. And then I'm gonna spend a a key point to uh, take the disengage action as a bonus action because I'm in a bad spot. So I'm gonna get out in the middle of that and sort of sort of sp like side spring my way between my compatriots here. Right, so you hit red, right? Yeah, smack red, red for green, eight. Green, blue, purple. Assuming uh, 18 hits. <laughs> it, it definitely does. Okay. <laughs> Let's try and yeah. keep things in the squares, too. Yeah, I can't... I'm sorry about that. I can't find a no, map. No, this is good. Um, yeah, so that, that's a nice little bite that you take out of and run away with some of his flesh. Next up are the commoners. A lot of the commoners see that combat's going. Some of them stay and just sort of take cover as they watch on. Uh, a lot of them are trying to get past the guards who are imposing on them. Um, among them are these two, just yelling loudly. Yeah, the commoners don't appear to be engaging in a battle. Sure. Collectively, they all move five feet somehow. I guess there's a bunch of crowds <laughs> that have to like move past each other. <laughs> uh, next up is Ben, and uh, yeah, this is flanking on Kothar. Um, what? Not Kothar. Sorry, this is the second time that happened. Ronar. So it's still one second. Flanking is as long as there's two people engaging, or is it opposites? Well, I think we settled on... Two people engaging. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we chose that, like, episode one, so we're sticking with it. Where are you? There's a lot of sheets. Come on, Bannon. Okay. Uh, Ronark. So, Bannon had pulled out his scimitar weapon. First, he takes a swipe at you. Eight. Twelve to hit. Twelve to hit? Uh no, no way. Okay. Where am I looking for that? Your AC. AC. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, definitely yeah. not. And he takes another swipe at you. Ooh, twenty-five. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a smack. I think I know what this token is. Uh, so you take. Wait, did he just take two two attacks? Yes. Bastard. No joke. So. That's 11 damage. What? Yeah, he got a crow for scimitar. <laughs> and then, with his final, he <sighs> also has a dagger in his other hand. Yeah, I know what he is. Whoa! Uh, 22 to hit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit! And that's four piercing damage. Uh, I'm down. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Don't worry, so, Ronark. In about five more levels, we'll go through these guys. I'm, 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 at, I'm at negative two hit points. Yeah, he wasn't going for lethal. He just seems to be swiping at your extremities, trying to bring you down. He's definitely not attempting well, to kill you. And there goes our healer. But uh, the captain of the guard shows why he is indeed the captain of the guard as he swiftly takes down your large green friend. Oh, I'm upset. Uh, Reggie, you're up. Uh, Reggie's gonna sleep. <laughs> good night. He's gonna leave. No, he's he's he's, he's, saying he's gonna sleep, but it still sounds like he's going to he's going good night. Uh, yeah. 
first up this guy, and then the whichever, whichever guardsmen are felt by a 17. Awful roll. Alright, so... Does it have to be centered on something, and then all creatures in descending order of health? Uh, let me cast it. Never mind, uh... <sighs> hmm... I'm pretty sure it's like, you go by the least amount of health, right? And then everyone in Yeah, at least amount of health. Area. Yeah, 20 feet of a point you choose, so choose a point first. I'll choose the point uh, centered on this guy. So 20 feet from him. Ooh, he just missed the commoners, lucky. <laughs> but Liam's not it. Uh, yeah, you're gonna hit a lot of people. So... What'd you roll? 17? So 17, yeah. Uh, Liam, how much health do you have? Let's see. Okay, now. Kothar, what's your health at? Wait, I'm going to sleep? No, 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 just what's your health? Eight. Oh, well, yeah. You're going God to sleep. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> fuck, Reggie? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I totally thought I could choose. Nah, well, you can change the center point if you want to change where you're doing it from. <laughs> I'm going to let you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll still make it. Kothar, <laughs> what the fuck? I'll make it uh, centered on this, but... Uh, it's still good. Eh? 10 feet in the air. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but what? But 10 feet in the air. <laughs> oh, so it goes down? I mean, it's a sound, right? Wouldn't it just be... It's a 20-foot uh, radius. So if I center it 10 feet above, it, um... So you're, like, making a sphere of it? It'll only be, uh... It'll only be a 10-foot radius. Interesting. Uh... That's, my, that's good math, right? If it's 10 feet up, it only affect... Or if it's... Yeah, if it's 10 feet up, the circle will only hit 10 feet. You know what? Fuck it. Sounds cool. Let's go with it for now. <sighs> Uh, yeah. It's like so, if you cast a fireball right on this guy, but do it so it's 20 feet up and only hit this guy. Jesus so, Christ. Only two of the guards fall asleep. The one had been previously injured. And let's roll a 1d3. Or a 1d2. And the guard on top falls asleep. So yeah, and the guards moves, drop their gears and they knock down. Oh, you can move through allied squares, yeah? Uh, yes. Alright, then he'll move. Uh, he doesn't want to be in Percival's way when he takes out this guy, so he's just gonna... Yeah, hold up, let me, I'm just gonna move Kothar and Percival, sir, in a box. No, oh, thank you. Okay, that's how it is. Then he will. He'll uh, he'll bar the other guard's way. Okay. And he'll draw his short sword finally. So he snaps his fingers and two guards drop. Yep. Uh, Ronark, you have been rended asunder by. Uh, <sighs> Jesus by Christ! With one fucking hit. Okay. Oh, well, technically three, but. Death save, my friend. I mean, yeah, you can recover from that, right? It was non-lethal damage, but... Uh, he's still unconscious. Yeah. Oh, that's right, so you don't even get a death save. Yeah, he's, he's just good. You're just... You I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just lying out. there. I'm just lying there bleeding. GG. Uh... Yeah, Sir Percival, however... He's also Billy Badass. He's gonna run through his charge and attack the man blocking the way. He, he also sees that you go down. And he has respect for you, for your cleric of helm. So he's coming to your aid. Let's hope Percival's a knight. <laughs> hey, could be in meta. Oh, <laughs> well, he is Sir Percival. Sir Percival 
first takes his great sword and yeah. swings it for 20. Oh my god. It does gosh. 10 slashing damage to the man up on the stage. Then per <laughs> Sir Percival also tries to lunge it through the man's chest. Makes another attack. Where is it? I just clicked it. Okay, there you go. Uh, another 20 for 12. Damn. The man does not see it coming. The The sword goes right through him as he crumbles to the ground. Wait, that might not actually... Yeah, actually, no, he takes a knee. This man is bloodied and beaten. Blood is pouring out of his wounds. But he's not knocked unconscious. 12 to 20, yeah. Because all of them are coming like whisper roll. Yeah, he's GM roll. Sneaky lads, boys, lads. It, it makes it better for us because it, it shows like it'll have attack roll, then what creature made it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, so I noticed that when I did the fucking the commoner attack and it said cultist. I'm like, fuck yeah. It. yeah. No, he's, he's, it's so fine. Paranoid. It's fine. I got no trouble uh, with it. Eleanor is going to. Yeah, I guess she'll she'll try knocking him out. She's not gonna murder her citizens, even though they betrayed her. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor has a long sword, which she takes an attack with. Yeah, that hits him, and it knocks him unconscious. And then she uses her movement to get right up on top of Bannon. And then uh, she takes a swing at him. He's trying to get him away from you. Take the aggro. Uh, that hits. She slashes at him for eight damage. All right. Top of the rounds, the guards are all freaking out. Well, not all of them. This guy's attempting to get back into the fray of things. <laughs> well, actually, Kurt never took his turn. One. Yeah, Kurt. Oh, yeah, Kurt. Uh, Kurt feeling emboldened. Earth, Kurt. He's just like... run up and stab him. Yeah, he runs up and says, "Ah, everyone, calm down." No one's listening to him because it's Kurt. <laughs> uh, this Kurt has got everything under. Oh, he's down. I'm oh, sorry. Ronak has everything under control. And he's down. We are like brothers. This guard uh, goes over to one of his companions and tries slapping him awake. Is there a roll for that? No, he just, he, he no, spends just action. his action to wake him up. He spends his action, he wakes up. Very well. Uh, the guard spends his turn getting up from his sleep, and he re-equips his weapon, so it's his turn, the green one. Uh, how far can you travel? Boom, boom, boom. He can make it. Yeah, he can make it. He's actually going to be kind of dumb. He's gonna run over here and attempt to attack Sir Percival. Uh, absolutely whips it. It's pretty embarrassing. He wants to go home now. Uh, this guard over here is gonna move aside. The executioner is stepping out of the way. He's not really involved nice. in this fight. Only good at killing people if they can't fight back. It's fine. I'm out. He's gonna <laughs> stab at Eleanor. So many rolls. I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> and misses. Great. Uh, Kothar, you're up. The other guards are still running crowd control, blah, blah, blah. Kothar will attempt to send this guard home forever. And, uh, yeah. I might do... So I'm going to do an arm strike for sure. Twelve. Does not hit? Well, you have an advantage. I do. Yeah, you're flying. Yeah, you have oh advantage. shit, I didn't roll from the sheet. Motherfucker. I mean, I'll roll a second strike. Okay, so I missed no regardless. <laughs> um, so. Man, roll from your sheet, goddammit. I'll roll from this. I don't think I have my fucking bite in. There we go. Yeah, it is. So I'll do this. Um, I know you like your tet mackers, but come on, dude. <laughs> so I'll do that for my bite if I hit him. Oh, oh, baby! Yeah, Go for the balls, boo. That hits. Oh, my God. Oh, it's only 
Yep. <laughs> that shouldn't be. So, uh, Purple Guard, you want to describe how you bite him? He's not dead or knocked mm -hmm. out, but he's feeling it. Gain temp hit points and make sure I get my temp in. Um, just one. So... I, he's, he's trying to stab at uh, Sir Percival while he's up there. I, I presumably just smashing the shit out of Blondie. And then uh, he tries to stab at him and misses. And I sort of slinking around, kind of blink twice. Because I thought he was going to come for me, Kothar did. But then seizing the initiative and walk up and <laughs> chew into his uh, rib. Pretty much, just bite into his flank. And <laughs> just kind of rip him around and rip a good, good portion of his flank out. But yeah. Yeah, sorry. I forgot to add Liam to initial roll. Oh yeah, Liam. Uh, I'll just say that his first round was spent just being confused and not knowing what yeah. to do. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, yeah, so you take a bite out of the guard. Commoners take the round. Uh, let's do 1d20 three times, see if they can get through the guards. No, no. Oh, yes, no, there we that go. guy's That's out. Good. Naturally, the uh, the group up here That's already manages funny. to push through Kurt. He's shoved down, drops all his gears, they run away. His chainmail falls off somehow. <laughs> Fucking Porker! I did it from bottom to top. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's the legend of Kurt. This fight goes off in a distance. We're just gonna hide him. Uh, that's Commoners. Bannon. Poor Kurt. <laughs> Bannon versus Eleanor. All right. It's the fight of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Fucking! I don't know why I keep losing his sheet out of all the characters. All right, Bannon has another action. It's not an attack. He's going to. All right? No, never mind. Yeah, fuck it. Swing scimitar, scimitar dagger. Uh. Is he flanking? Yes. So it's hit, hit, miss. Crits, 10. 7. Gosh. So 17 on Eleanor. I'm going to go to sleep. What is Eleanor's HP? The advantage crits are real. Yeah, he's gotten a lot of crits. Dude, it's fucked up. Oh, no, Eleanor's still in the fight. I didn't. I didn't even get a swing in. I know. Man. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta eat shit, Green One. <laughs> Today was your day. All right, yeah. Eleanor takes a bunch of chunks. She's getting hit. Uh, next up is Reggie. You see Bannon just swinging away. He's very talented. Uh, Eleanor manages to parry and stagger strike, but. It's not looking too hot for her. I didn't want to do this, but you've left me no choice. Uh oh. He, he almost presses his hand against the head of the guardsman, the, the blue guardsman that woke up his friend. And he casts magic missile on him. Oh. <laughs> oh, he only takes eight. On um, blue guard? Yeah, blue guard. Yeah, the three missiles come crashing forth into his head. He takes a couple steps back. He's still up. Uh, Ronark. Just doing Ronark things. Shit, dude. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah. Liam, uh, now has a decision to make. Give me... Huh. Persuasion? Yeah, Reggie, give me a persuasion, and then Bannon's gonna give me a persuasion. <coughs> oh, and another fucking crit from Bannon. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, okay. Persuasion? So wait a minute, you throw perception. Oh, yeah, oh, roll one. Sorry. Roll again. Come on, you got this. This crit. It's 22. You're beating 22. Crit, you can do it. Oh, oh you dirty, dirty man. You both crit, though. So. Another I'll rhino limbo? This round, yeah, Liam is so <laughs> torn up over his alliances <laughs> that he sort of runs into the crowd for now. <laughs> He's <laughs> He owes Bannon a lot, and he respects you greatly, and he doesn't know who's in the right, who's in the wrong. There are so many blur, blurry gray lines, he doesn't know what's going on. Percival is absolutely livid, absolutely pissed that his charge is being bombarded by Bannon. He's not going to hold anything back, he's striking the kill. Um... Yeah, make attack on saving for the creature can add before. Okay. Uh, first, though, he's going to. You guys can't see that either, huh? Nope. No. Whatever. Uh, he yells out leadership. He notices that Kothar is on the ground. I'm, I keep calling Kothar. Ronark is down. <laughs> I keep doing the same thing. He yells out to Kothar because he. he he realized that you two seem to have sort of a tight bond. And uh, for one minute. You got that. Ooh. So he yells out. Lizard man, your friend is on the throes of death. Fight with honor. And he charges forward and takes a swing at Banner. Ooh. That does not hit. Uh, Bannon manages to parry the great sword that's coming down with him. Now he's fighting two people, even with advantage. Uh, fuck okay, that's what to say. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor just takes a beating. Uh, what do you got? She's just attacking. Okay. She's kind of hurt. She's gonna use her action to disengage. And she's gonna uh, run. Actually, no. Shit. How many do you have? Okay, you have two. She pulls out from beside her, her little satchel, she pulls out a vial, and quickly sort of... She, she opens up the half-orc's mouth, who's down, and pours it in. What's the roll for potion? 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 plus 2. Roll me that. No, you're going to be healed for that, Ronark. 2d4 plus 2. Healing pot. Double one. <laughs> he said double one. Liquid pours into your mouth and you swallow it unconsciously. It has a bitter taste, but it revitalizes you. You're now back in the action. No. Oh. Oh, my. My head. My head. <laughs> He's still on the ground, though, right? He's still prone. Yeah, he's prone. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of like rolling around and like grabbing my shoulder and and just kind of like getting my bearings and my senses back to myself. Yep. Uh, guards again. Purple man is pissed, so he's gonna take a strike at you with his spear. Old strategy, Cotton. Uh, no flanking. Fourteen minutes. Oh, did he just meet like a dirty bastard? He sure did. But Tygo's the Tygo's defender? Yeah, we settled nope, on meet that, right? What the fuck? What do we settle on? I need to settle this, like... If it's a saving throw, meet it's... beats. If it's attack roll for AC, meet beats. Great. Sorry, Be Kothar, me up. six damage. Okay. So my one temp is gone. And then I had eight, so I got three. Whew, I had... Uh... Greeny is gonna take a swipe at you. Uh, Regini. <laughs> Call me Regini. Regini. Oh, that's, oh uh, no. Well, advantage, 12. 12 to hit? No. Okay, the other guard is gonna run over to his partner. <laughs> attempt to wake Fucking him up. Fucking bastard. I'm gonna have to kill these guys. <laughs> He slaps him awake, he tells him, get back in the fight, soldier. 
the soldier gets back in a fight, but that's his turn. I'm I'm sorry. Does that uh, potion give me any certain number of health points back or hit points back? It gives you eight. Yeah, you start from zero, eight. don't you? Whenever you heal back up, or... yeah. yeah. So you have eight. Okay, so the eight that I rolled, that's what I get back. Yep. 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 Kothar, you. Oh no no no! One more, one more mm-hmm. guy. He sees uh. He sees Eleanor with her back turned as she's bringing Koth- uh, Ronark back up, and he takes uh, a cheap shot at her. Thirteen to hit, and that's obviously yeah, no way. She, even while distracted, is uh, pretty nimble. Manages to dodge a spear. Man's very untrained. Okay. All right, lads, boys, lads. And remember, you're inspired mm-hmm. by him. So, here's what we're going with. Um, I'm gonna use key to use a uh, disengage, right? And I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna use that as a bonus action now to do what I want to do next. Uh, so, from Kothar's perspective, um, Ronark is down. It is Bannon's fault. Uh, Kothar is angry. So I'm going to try to disengage, push past this idiot, get through anybody who's in my way. I'm going to try to tackle Bannon off stage as hard as I possibly can. Okay. So yeah, give me your athletics with advantage. And I will use my inspiration for that. Yep. And he's going to attempt to dodge it. With his oh my oh, fucking oh. god! Nice. Fuck it, just because I did. Twenty six. There you go. There's mine. Just cause I'm gonna roll this one. Like uh, in general chat, he's got plus three to death. So. Good luck, lad. No. No, yeah, no. You manage to tackle him. You, you said you're trying to tackle him. I'm just. I'm taking him push. off stage and just. I, so. Kothar breaks away from this guard, just slips by him. Says, "You will not harm the green one." And it's, ah, I just grab him by the and just slam him as hard as try to grab him and tackle him as hard as I possibly can off the stage into the dirt. Yeah, go with that. You knock him off the stage. Go with him, pretty much into the ground. Yeah. Can I put your token on top? Yeah, I'm a power. I'm a yeah, power can, top, you, you so it's move. fine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you now have him on the ground. Snapping at him like a velociraptor as he's there. <laughs> Trying to beat him up. Uh, all right. Let's, uh... Commoner rolls 2d20s. The other group is already running. These guys are fucking out of here. Does 14 beat... <laughs> Just like original. 17. Nope. So the guards are managing to uh, contain all this. These guys are fucking outy. They. Kurt is like crying for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kurt. <laughs> some people are staying by the watch, but they're getting out of the fray. These guys are getting absolutely angry. Uh, in fact. One of the civilians is going to throw a punch at the guard. He's feeling cocky. Amazing. No. <laughs> that is uh, fitting. So, he often, gingerly caresses his cheek. Off in this realm of the world, there's a young lad feeling very confident, very cocky. He taps the guard on the shoulder and says, Oi! Throws a punch. Shatters his knuckles against the armor <laughs> Of the guard. Oh, <laughs> God. And reels back in pain. Alright. That's commoners. Bannon is on the ground. Um, is he grappled or is that just a tackle? Like a shot? I think he's you, 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 you tell me. I mean, I just wanted to bring your, him. Your around. roles are just like. Yeah, so I'm taking it as like a shove and you went with him. I mean, yeah. I, I was just going to. I was trying to just fucking launch him off stage with me. So, I mean, however, however you want to do it, I'm fine with it. Yeah. You, like, te- you checked him, right? And he fucking went down and you went on top of him. Yeah. Uh, he pushes you off, uses his movement to stand up. And he looks at you and says, Lizard folk, surely you understand might makes right. And he uh, attacks you. 
Uh, just one second. If he's grappled, he has no movement. He wasn't grappled. I'm taking it as like a shove, and he just. Moved oh, okay. Him. Yeah. Actually, what is this? Can I think of two AC to one mana? Yeah, blah blah blah. Okay. Scimitar nine. No. Scimitar twenty-two. Dead. Dagger. Don't Dagger. don't even roll it. I'm down. What's his what's his damage gonna be? Five. I'm down. Okay. Like I so said, the wizard have the most hit points in the group. Apparently, I have fifteen. Dude, I thought Kothar was like a. This guy Kothar fucked Kothar. This guy fucked Ronark to death. <laughs> I have no. I have, I have fifteen. I have fifteen hit points. So I have zero now. I have twenty, and he knocked me out. He had a crit. To be fair. Um, yeah. Bannon manages to once again show that he is the captain of the guard of Erlane. He is the captain. Easily he's the captain now. You. Uh, you're knocked to the ground. He He's making sure not to go for lethal blows. He's not trying to kill people here. That's Certain a, that's a mistake that he's going to regret up. if I live. So you're, uh, you're prone, and he walks off, saunters off in this direction. Oh, oh no, no, he can't move. He got up, he got up. Yeah. Oh, no, he has half movement, right, when you get up? From prone, I believe. That's the ruling. Yeah, half movement. So, 15. He, he starts sauntering off to get back on stage and rejoin the fight. Reggie, you're up. <sighs> Absolutely surrounded by guards. The two you put the sleeper right. now back up. Bannon, who you've seen firsthand take down two of your fighters. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. Seventeen hit points worth of sleep. Uh, centered uh, on Reginald, ten feet up. Oh, for all the guards? Yeah, just the guards around him. Uh, seventeen. Let's see. Green is not gonna be affected. Blue and purple and red. Six, nine, twelve. You, uh, what is Percy? Percy hasn't taken damage. Bannon hasn't taken damage. Oh, yes, he has, a little bit. Um, yeah, it's just the three, the three guards. Oh, no, green. Yeah, green is fine. So these three, purple, red, and blue, drop. Poor blue, he had just spent his entire time here. Getting his people up. up. All right, and Reggie is going to, um... He's going to let this guard attack him if he so wishes. Yep, he's going to take his attack of opportunity. Uh, <laughs> eight to hit. Doesn't hit. <laughs> Not a chance. And he'll end his turn by providing advantage, providing uh, flanking for this guy. Yep. Uh, Ronark, you, you're back in the fray. Sorry, Ronark. Dang it. Man. Ronark uh, stands up. Uh, he kind of pulls himself up off of the ground uh, and stands up, shakes his head, trying to figure out w what happened. Uh, he he kind of uh, gets his bearings and his blurred vision co comes back into focus as he you know uh, over you know looks over the uh, the courtyard. To see people running and screaming, um, to see you know people fighting next to him, and uh, he sees the guard standing in front of him, uh, kind of jostling back and forth, and immediately, just out of sheer anger uh, about everything that's going on, uh, just takes a just takes a pot shot swing at the guy. Fourteen hit. Is that right? Oh, you rolled low. I think it missed this. Yeah. Your uh, your pot shot clanks against his armor. Ah. Still a bit groggy from uh, getting 
knocked down. Yeah, he just kind of shakes his head as his uh, mace bounces off his armor and kind of uh, gets his bearings back. Right. What's my roll? Eight. So it's after that. Okay. Uh, Liam, once again, he's gonna. You know, it's about even 50 50. I'm just gonna do a 1v2. One, he joins you guys. Two, he joins Bannon. It's going good. Liam. We made a good choice today, boys. <laughs> he really did. Liam looks around at the chaos. He thinks on his past. He has he very deep respect for you, Lord Reginald. These other people he doesn't know. Bannon he's known his entire life. He's got to back his boy. What are you going to do? Let's see. So uh, Liam finally decided to take action. He's going to cast Magic Missile. Uh, I'm going to do two to... Uh, two to Reggie. And then one to... No, two to Percival. He's not going to hit Reggie. Fuck that. <laughs> um, yeah, in targets is going to be uh, Percival and Eleanor. Where Where is my fucking... Okay, you didn't see that. Good, because that was a misclick. 3d4 plus 3. At level 1, 11. 11 split up two ways. So Percival takes 5, Eleanor takes 3. That puts you there. Eleanor's not looking too hot. Percival's ready for action. And that'll be his turn. And he apologizes. He says, Sir Reginald, we must stop this at once. He's pleading to you. He thinks you're in charge of this group. <laughs> uh, Percival takes his turn. Jeez. I should have... Are, are there mass combat rules? I don't know. Or... Uh, mass combat rules are just for, like, literal mass combat. like armies. You have, like, hundreds of guys. What you you think could certainly doing? use that. <laughs> Uh, Percival's gonna turn to the guard that's down there since Bannon's currently out of range. He's gonna take a swipe. Uh, 12 doesn't hit. Swipe. High ground advantage? Uh, it doesn't matter. 13? 12 and 13 are his rolls. Okay. The uh, second attack does hit. And what is Greeny at? That knocks him out. Uh, yeah. But ba uh, Percy is out to kill, so he absolutely decapitates this guard. <laughs> All right, now then, Eleanor would be up. However, from the opposite side of town, where you know the church, the Temple of America to be. Oh, gosh. A crowd of people, some you would recognize, but you're in a fits of battle, make their appearance. And uh, in the lead is actually uh, an elf and uh, he gets to the scene, he sees all the violence that's going down. Where is your spell sheet? Oh god. He's gonna cast sleep centered on all of you. So in the 20 foot right around here. Uh, a little bit so he doesn't hit himself. Uh, where is it? Level 3? Level 2. Level 2, sleep. What was that for sleep rolls? Is it you add one? Uh, you add two d eight for every level above. So seven d eight. Seven d eight. For twenty four. Okay, Lois, Eleanor falls asleep. Ronark, what are you at? For what? Uh, health for right now. I'm asleep now. Okay, Ronark I'm... falls asleep. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, who's low? Guard is low, falls asleep. Well, actually, my, my hit might point, be up. I have eight hit points. Yeah, this guard doesn't... Orange guard... Actually, orange guard hasn't taken a hit, so he's fine. First... Reggie, what are you at? Uh, he's immune to sleep. 
You're immune to sleep, doesn't matter. You're ready to sleep. Uh, Bannon, everyone else is fine, shit. That wasn't exactly the effect I was going for. But uh, casting this yeah, spell- Yeah, you really wanna go like high level shit for that. Yeah, I figured. Uh, the new fray makes their appearance known. Uh, people turn, they see as the Temple of America and Modiset, the elf companion, uh, arrive at the scene. He uh, clears his voice. It's very booming. He seems to be projecting it outward. He says, uh, You are all behaving like children. Some of the people look towards them. You two fucking fall asleep, so it doesn't matter. It seems that Eleanor, who is in charge, is knocked out. Percival turns. Uh, Reggie, how do you respond to this guy? All my party's fucking knocked out. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Reggie thinks he has to retreat, so he will be ready to do that. You're getting ready to retreat? Yeah. Uh, these guys start moving forward. They seem to be running. No, they're not hostile, right? Uh... The, the, the priestess, uh, priestess Marisha steps forth. He says, she's uh, yelling towards Ben, and she she's been watching for a bit in the shadow. She says, uh, "There is a way we can solve this without resorting to violence. Don't you agree?" Uh, Bannon is contemplating. He sees the bloodshed. One of his guards is dead. People are bleeding all over the place. The crowd is in a mess. Uh, yeah. Then in... realizing that he's doing a lot more damage now than good, he yells to his remaining guards, which is literally just one guy. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> you there! Lay down your arms. He sheaths his blade. He turns to Reginald and Percival. Percival is absolutely furious. He turns to Percival first. So Percival. Perhaps we can parlay. Ah, uh, fucking Percy. Give me a roll. Did I just draw? You're here. I just tell you. Someone roll me a 1d20 plus whatever Percival saying is. I'll add the modifier after. My shit's reloading for some reason. I oh, got a natural yeah. three. Yeah, Percival decides to yield. Probably. <laughs> we're, we're, we're calling this. Uh, what was it? Defense? Meet? The attacking persuasion roll. Defender, right? defender wins. Fuck you, Lost. Mitchell. <laughs> we're ending this combat because half my party's knocked out. This seemed like a good time. Okay. All right. Tension cease. Uh, Bannon goes, wakes up his guards. They begin stabilizing people who are knocked down from injuries. They help you guys up. Uh, they yeah, first the disarm you. Party. You know, they 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 kick your your mace away, and whatnot, and your blades, just so that when you get up, you know that. They're not trying to fight, right? Ronark's on the platform, snoring. Are we entering a cutscene or can we act? You can act. Okay, the yeah, cutscene is they're going and waking everyone up, except for, I guess Reggie can take an action while this is happening. Yeah, Reginald will, um... He'll punch both Eleanor and Ronark to deal one damage to wake them up. Yep. I mean, sure. You hit them for one, they get up. It matters because the bon because uh, I can wake up two with a bonus action punch. Well, might not. I don't know. They're both up. <laughs> both are freaking unconscious. Yeah, no. The, the guards, they they literally disarm people. They can't disarm Kothar, so they they tie a little rope around his wrists, keep him from punching. I guess it'd be a muzzle. He bites a lot. <laughs> they have a muzzle on them. They put a muzzle on them as they awaken them. So, Ronark kind of 
rolls around and again is grabbing his brow and he kneels up on one elbow as he kind of pushes himself up slightly to get his bearings and then he's up on you know one knee with his head down his eyes still closed kind of trying to figure out what's going on and he brings a hand up to his forehead and rubs his forehead and then his hand runs down his face and then he opens his eyes and looks up and he lets out a sigh and he sees that there's no one fighting around him and that there's a new group of people approaching that he's never seen before what now and he pushes himself up and stands up on both feet we have to leave we have to leave now what is that reginald we have to leave this will not end badly this will not end well this already has not ended well what what are you blathering about what well speak i think he's the one that experimented on the old man e experimented on the old man shut up i I am confused. And he kind of like grabs his, you know, the, the bridge of his nose with two fingers, his eyes squished together. I, I don't understand. What is it you're saying? I think he's a necromancer. And at that, Ronark, his heart starts pumping and his adrenaline kicks in. Did you say a necromancer? Shut up! Right, so now people are starting to get up. Uh, Percival's busy tending to the mayor, who did take a couple blows, so he's wrapping her up. Bannon's dealing with his friend who almost died. Um, Kothar, you're, you're, you're awake and muzzled with rope. It wouldn't be too hard to break out of. 100% uh, sure. am, because I am not an animal. <laughs> so this guard, whatever this guard's doing, as far as standing there with the um, roping up my muzzle or roping up the muzzle for me or whatever, as soon as I wake up, just <laughs> smash through and rip off the ropes and everything like that, and just look at him. Uh, I, I didn't know how to disarm you. <laughs> no hard feelings, yeah. <sighs> Kurt. Yeah, he backs up. He runs over to Ben and. Liam sort of rejoins his group. He's, uh, an entire time he walks towards Ben and he's looking at Reggie. So he's looking at Reggie's back. Yeah, he's looking at Reggie's back. Tears in his eyes. Not really. <laughs> uh, the mayor gets up. She says, ah. Oh, ah, oh, to be young again, if only. She's not used to being absolutely destroyed in combat. I can imagine. Uh... Priestess steps forward. She says, Perhaps the Church of America can be arbiters in this disagreement between you all. <laughs> She's saying this to the mayor, and she says this to Bannon. She's saying it to everyone, really. She doesn't know the particulars, but she knows the power players in this group. Fancy one. What is an arbiter? A mediator. What is a mediator? It's a large stone that falls out of the sky. <laughs> the church will fall from the sky. She seeks to be a judge. And Kothar thinks about it. He doesn't seem like he's getting any worse. Oh. And we'll stand there. Just look blankly at the, the church goers. Eleanor, we must go to the Baron with this. 
she looks at you and she's kind of worried. She knows that she doesn't agree with this decision, but based on the previous experiences, it doesn't look like she can win this battle of brute force. Maybe you are right, Reginald. Ben is kind of angry at this. This is, this is not a matter of the temple. And then uh, the elf. Indeed. The elf chirps and he's like, Surely this is not a matter for you. Look how well that ended last time. Ben is still thinking about all the damages. The people have scattered. Some of the stalls are broken. Uh, if you were to gander over in that general direction, you see that uh, uh, the shithead fucking human dude is knocked out. How's the shit? The other guy's sort of laughing at him. He doesn't seem to be fighting Leo anymore. The guard doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so, Ronar kind of mindlessly wrapping bandages around his arm um, as he's talking to the mayor. I am at a loss here. What is it that they're asking? And uh, she looks over and she says, uh, I believe the temple is attempting to decide the fate of these two for their own. Perhaps she turns and turns to uh, Marisha. What is it that you have planned? She says, uh, Ben sort of church is like, yes. We should execute them, correct? And uh, Marisha responds with, No, no. I believe these two, which seem to be the matter of conflict between both parties, should come with us. We have the means of securing their imprisonment. We can redeem them through the loving grace of America. And she does a little, a little bow. And uh, the man, the elf Tristan, under my watch, they will cause no further disruptions or problems for any party. Reginald snickers and laughs at this. I'm sure they won't. Madam Mayor, have these men received any kind of trial? Should they be given to any group, whether it's your executioners, or their priests. Absolutely not. I have heard no such trial. She turns to Ben and you, and he looks at her like, what do you want? You have forgone so many steps in the judicial process. What do you have to say for yourself? And he's getting angry again. He begins to go towards his blade. Sir Percival perks up again. And uh, it looks like shit's about to go down again, but. There's a lot of more people around this time, so tensions um, are rising between these two once more. As the tensions are rising, Ronark walks over and takes his dagger out and cuts the rope holding him up. Uh, Derek falls from the little stool. Well, he doesn't fall, you know. He's no longer like tightly bound. He still um, has shackles on his wrists and feet. But uh, there's no longer like a nice little strain on his neck from the rope. And then, <sighs> thank you. He eyes Reginald, and then he looks over at the priestess as he continues walking. He makes eye contact with him, with with them, and as he does, he cuts down the next one. The tied up man sort of gives you an eye. His left eye is bruised. He's very damaged. He doesn't say anything to you, but he stands up straight. And as he stands up straight, I look him right in the eye. You, I do not trust. You better tread carefully. Silence, indignant silence. The executioner is kind of like, Whoa. he sighs. This is his day. <laughs> Walks off. Fuck this, guys. It's his lunch. He goes home. <laughs> He got sent home. He got us two hours in. Eleanor, this is not a fight we can win. 
I know you are right, but this man, he does not speak for the people of Erlaine. He has no authority. He oversteps his boundaries. Overstep my boundaries, you say? You. Indeed. What you did right now is high treason. You have taken life and death into your own hands when it is not for you to decide, or the mayor. It's for the Baron. And the priestess walks off, she says, all, the, all of this can be decided at a later time for now. Don't you both agree it is best that we take control, a neutral party? And you, the church has a lot of nerve showing its face around me after the assault on my person. She looks at you quizzically. I am certain you are mistaken. Last I saw, you were borrowing our books. Last you saw, I. The last the dogs and your guards saw, they had attacked me. She and looks lady, like I cannot lie, so I am not mistaken. She looks towards uh, the two dog handlers, they both shrug. These are serious allegations you are putting forth. What proof do you have? You have your witnesses. I have my own. I see no witness with you. He, uh, he does, he no longer has his back towards Liam. He just looks at him, raises an eyebrow. Liam, as soon as you make eye contact with him, looks towards the ground. He still seems to be feeling guilty about betraying you. Redeem yourself, Liam. Liam looks up those words and he perks in his... Well, we were borrowing your library, <laughs> looking for a book that we could not find. And, and then uh, Bannon cuts him off says, This is not time for that. We have matters no. to settle now. Now is the exact Let time. the man speak. Bannon can see that the crowd is turning against him, so he shuts his mouth for the time being. As I was saying, <laughs> Lord Reginald and I, he shoves past the mayor to get by your side. <laughs> Lord Reginald and I, we were perusing your books and then we couldn't find what we wanted, so we went back downstairs. Um, he looks to you. And as if something caught my eye. Right, something caught his eye, and then the statues attacked us, right? Indeed. I believe that's what you said, sir. Yes, I went to I went to check a handle, and statues attacked me. From there, I made a hasty retreat, and as soon as I was outside, the dogs were released upon me, and those who could tried to attack me themselves. Anyone else want to say anything, or am I just gonna... No, I don't fucking know what happened. <laughs> the priest says, uh... So I am certain you can understand my hesitation. This matter should be taken up a level higher. Clearly there is more going on here than what is capable of being handled. Look around you, my child. I apologize for... Oh, what is it? I apologize for any misunderstandings between us, but maybe you are attempting to access something you shouldn't have. There are measures in place, but you would not have been harmed. The authorities that you speak of are not here. We must make a decision here and now. And the Temple of America is more than willing to handle this for the time being. And that These Ronark's... actions lead to dire consequences. What was Ronark doing? And it, Ronark's nostrils flare, and he kind of uh, grunts. Ruff. What interest do you have in these two men? They can just as well be saved in the 
jail cells of the city. They do not need to be under your care, under your supervision. The very jail cells of the prison, the, the, the warden who wishes to execute them? Do you believe that to be a wise idea? I am simply saying we are a neutral party offering our services. And, uh, yeah. Bannon's, like, uh, yeah, uh, some sort of talking to his, uh, his guards over here. Kothar is kind of trying to get a sense for these temple folks. He's not really met the religious type of people, so is that insight to see what they're about yeah see what they want yeah, about yeah, dude. they're perfectly uh, legitimate hundred yeah, percent your, your animal instincts doesn't really give you much help in this situation they don't appear to be threatening but you can't tell either way from but what uh, seen, they aren't threatening right from what you know yourself but um hearing reginald talk uh ronark isn't sure either and he's trying to uh gauge whether or not they're telling the truth um because reginald doesn't seem to trust them so he's going off of reginald's reaction to them and trying to find out whether or not uh they're being honest you guys poor investigators all Okay, so with that, like I said, you have just met Reginald, right? You're not exactly chummy, although from his words, they put suspicion and doubt in your mind. Though from the words of the priestess and the followers, they don't appear to be up to anything uh, nefarious. So yeah, because you've known Reggie for a bit, you sort of trust him, but it's not enough trust to uh, put you against them. Well, Mayor, ultimately, this is your choice. I will not have them with that man. She uh, stares at at a Bannon. Bannon's just sort of cleaning up his weapons that has her blood on them. Your blood as well, but that's another matter. In fact, I think he fucked all of you up. Yep. Except... Fuck that guy. Well, very well. That settles it. If the mayor does not want these men in the jail under Bannon's control, then a neutral party it is. That is very wise of you. Perhaps you would like to, I don't know, read of Helm? Oh, sorry, fuck, of America. You know, she's putting her pitch out there, her spiel. America could use a fine cleric such as yourself. You are free to worship whoever it is that you are called to. I am called to my God and my calling. You will leave me to it and not try and convert me. She respectfully uh, stands down. She understands your devotion to your lord. This one would like to know about this America. <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing? I've heard, yeah. the, I've heard the Kool-Aid is absolutely refreshing. She perks up at that. She says, America. Oh, divine America. There is so much I can say. I keep changing your damn voice. I'm sick, dude. It's okay. You've only got one. Anyways. <laughs> she's uh, Reginald will uh, whisper to Eleanor. I'll just, I'll just say it then. Yeah. I'll just say, perhaps there is wisdom in this. While I do not completely trust the church, and of course do not trust Bannon, you can trust me, can't you, Eleanor? I can keep them for now. And, uh, she thinks about this. She says, uh, I do trust you, Lord Reginald. Where would you stay? Uh, I don't believe Bannon would be satisfied if I were to let you stay in my abode. Hmm. 
I believe there. I'll need to think on this. Perhaps an in room. Though I think I have a better idea. I just need some time to formulate it. I I understand, but uh it doesn't appear time is a commodity. We don't have time, yes. that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, stay with me at my in room. Until a time comes where a higher power can be brought in. You want to propose that to the group, or...? Yeah. I propose that I separate myself from either- from all parties and act as... ...a holding agent until proper authorities can be brought to bear. The crimes are capital, murder. This- this will require the Lord, or the Baron of the region, yeah. So, uh, the priestess Marisha is about to say something, and Banning chimes in and says, No way! He's with her! I know it! I can be impartial, Banning. Impartial? In fact, I give my word on it. You killed one of my men. I doubt that's impartial. You've already taken your side. Do you I say they stay with me. Back? The prison... Is yeah, obviously the best place for prisoners. He puts that out there. No one's really listening. You have that openly part of declared treason. Not exactly partial. All right, so let's just get a quick vote. What do you guys think? So Mitchell wants to take him with him and an inn or something, but uh, Bannon's against that. Uh, the temple wants to take both of them and watch over them. Did you say Mitchell, or did you mean Reginald? Oh, Reginald. <laughs> I don't know. Who is it? I don't know any Mitchell in this game. Yeah, Mitchell's uh, one of the commoners who just piped in and everyone ignored him. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that Kothar cares either way. He's He's interested in learning about God right now. Oh yeah, she <laughs> is more than welcome to show you. Perhaps, young lizard man, she, she's never really dealt with your kind before. You as well she, she. You can accompany us. We have many words to share with you. The, the divine being of America. Yes. This one is curious. And I suppose you represent the mayor's side, correct? If you do, then we can grab one of Sir Bannon's men, and there you go. Three parties, and we simply provide the housing. This one is of nature. This one does not align himself with the woman. But whatever it is that the green one decides, I suppose, this one will follow. Now look at the half-orc. Yes, well, it seems we are at an impasse. They do not want to put these prisoners in the prison, of course, for fear of them being executed without cause. Ben and spit some blood. But they also do not want to put them in your care, mistress. Without knowing more about you and your temple. It seems there has been some goings on there that do not make sense. And you are not completely trusted. The temple is more than available for inspection. I have no problems with you. I have not dealt with you in the past. But the fact that there is any question at all, the only option is for us, just like Reginald said, is to take these men and keep them under our care until this is figured out. I would be amenable to you joining me. After all, 
as we do not live here and have no we have no plans on this city indeed we have no workings we have no dealings with anyone here all right well uh let's see so obviously bannon's against it because he doesn't trust you guys anymore after the conflict the mayor's for it temple's pretty neutral so where would you take him uh who's gonna ask you this if i can mayor where would you like these men to reside <laughs> impartial let's ask the mayor where she wants them. she thinks for a moment naturally she would want to say with her and her great knight but uh the crowd's probably not gonna like that um well the slumbering serpent inn is currently under investigation i believe Bannon sort of nods. Actually, Bannon is a nod. He's fucking pissed. Uh, there is a second inn. So you can stay. The Golden Grain Inn should have room for all of the, the parties involved. Excellent. Very well. And he looks over to the priestess we're going to take these men and they're going to be under our care at the Golden Grain Inn. We are the only true neutral party in this town, not you, and definitely not Bannon or his jailers. The priest thanks for a moment. She says, as you Request? I have no problem with this. Ben is literally the only one raising a fuss. Excellent. Alright. Fine. Have it your way. However, I want one of my men there as well. Can we agree on that? And he looks over at Reginald and over at Kothar to get a, a sense of what they feel about it. Kothar, oh, it's a good old <laughs> Kurt. Um, no, it's it's a uh, Kothar is actually kind of speaking with the, the America people. Uh, she <laughs> she will gladly take you aside and preach. I will accept Kurt. Uh, two of my men. <laughs> will accept <laughs> Fine then. Kurt and Liam. Liam. We are agreed. Got him. Very well, it is settled. Kurt and Liam. Liam, and how do you feel about this? He still sort of uh he's still sort of disappointed with the happenings of today. Um Bannon trusts him since he sided with Bannon. And, uh, he says, I'll... I, I, I just want to do what's right, sir. So, I'll do my part. Excellent. Excellent. Kurt, well, then it is your, settled. Put your armor back on, please. Gather your weapon again, your helmet, and your knife, and your boots. How did your boots fall off? Uh, aye, aye, sir. I, I mean, uh, he looks at Bannon, and Bannon nods and sighs and rubs his fingers on his temple. And Kurt runs off to go get his gear that he left behind. I like Kurt. Well, if you're decided. Uh, Ronark, you were saying something? Uh, I was I was just agreeing. Then it is decided. We are off to the uh, what was it the uh, the golden, golden grain in the golden the grain, grain in. Should you need us, you know where to find us. I trust. I don't actually. That someone here can send a representative to the Baron. And that sounds talking? like. Just the clicks in general. 
Yep, that sounds that sounds like something that falls definitely under the mayor's purview. Right, I will have a messenger sent at once. Hey, uh, he's simply he's just gonna disagree for everything she puts out there. You both can do it. I don't care. Both do it at the same time. I want a message to the Baron. Very well. The uh, temple, seeing now that their job is done, uh, the fight is Thank you for your intervention, Good. wizard. Why, of course. You're always welcome at the Temple of America. And I hope, perhaps, we can solve this mystery of your attack. I hope we'll be resolved as well. He inclines his head. She's also just preaching at Gothar. Are you following her? <laughs> so, uh, while you guys are getting ready to take the prisoners to wherever, and Gothar will look at, uh, Ronar, green one. Yes, Gothar. This one wants to know more about this god. It is interesting. I will go to the inn when I am done. Very well. But you take care. Be aware of everything around you. Be wary of everyone around you. Yes. And he uh, kind of nods to Kothar as he walks off. Right, so the priestess Marisha takes you under her wing and very excitedly begins preaching. Scales, you mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> uh, and the guards follow suit. They simply were there for crowd control if necessary. She wanted to. Yeah, that's implied. Um, yeah, so the prisoners are ready for transportation. Liam and Kurt, Kurt returns with his gear on. We'll be accompanying you. Bannon gathers his men and prepare to bury the dead. Well then, who is going to show us where this golden grain in is? I remember where it is. And if I'm wrong, Kurt, but Liam can tell us where it is. Of course, sir. Of course. Lead the way. As, as we're walking, uh, Reggie will go over to Kothar and I'll ask him. The the mayor said she sent you to investigate this some outlier in the forest. And I would break away kind of abruptly from the priestess for a minute to talk to the fancy one. Yes. Are you talking to Ronark or me? Let's get this figured out. Uh, you're not with us, No, it's right? Ronar. <laughs> yeah, you called him Kothar. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm with the... Oh, were you talking Americans. to me? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was talking to Ronark. You're Kothar now, I feel dude. like it's like Ekans and Snake. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just the word backwards. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. <laughs> I know. Kothar, Ronark. That was Cranor, I guess, or Cranor, but... No. <laughs> Uh, he asks this to Ronark, then. <laughs> Repeat it, please. Uh, the mayor had told me that you were investigating some outlier in the woods. Uh, yeah, yes, um, we still have not had the best opportunity to inform her of what's going on, but she wanted us to make sure that someone was doing well out in the in. Needless to say, easily to say, she is doing well out there in the world. Tell me about her, please. I know nothing about her. Never met her. We were, um, we were doing as we were asked, and we attempted to make contact when Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. She basically 
insinuated that we should leave her area. So we did. And that is all. You, you don't know anything else about her. She has a house in the woods, in a tree, if you can believe that. Many books um, and strong magic. Magics, you say? Similar to mine, arcane. Similar to yours, similar to mine, similar to anyone else's. It is magic. It is forces bent to your will. Well, she bent it to her will to drive us off. Surprised a human can live out there in the woods for so long. Then again, they are hardy creatures. I don't think she was human. Oh? No, I think she was more one of your kind. A wood elf. Ah, hippies. An elf that lived in the woods, so if you'd like to call it a wood elf, that would be appropriate. The correct term is, the correct term is Sylvan, but if these works. Sylvan, Wood Elf, in any case, she was crazy. I would like all to the, speak more on this, although, I believe we may have found another third party. I do understand her anger with us in the moment. Do you tell Reggie the story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I can go ahead and, uh, you know, decide to uh, rehash all the details of how we broke into her house and ate her food and stole her belongings and punched her tried in the to face. Eat her as a bird. Tried to eat her. I mean, yeah. I just kind of. Just John uh, Kothar fucked everything up because that's more or less what it boils down to. <laughs> <laughs> The fucking asked her the wrong question. The fucking lizard fucked us. <laughs> <laughs> you did what? Well, I'm amazed you're alive. Like I said, he attempted to eat her. My word. In any case, we must be getting these men back under the supervision and into a secured area of that room. Perhaps not a room. Perhaps we can use a basement. In any case, they shall we sleep sure under. One for any secret compartments. They shall sleep under lock and key tonight. Indeed. And then we make our way to the Golden Grain Inn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm having a conversation with Ghost, but uh, honestly, that's uh, your character can decide how. I'm curious I'm about the well. dice. Um, would it be wisdom? I guess. Or how the fuck would I? I'm not entirely sure. I save against that? Hey, Mitchell, you're pretty familiar with the rules. What's if up? Priest is trying to convert someone to religion. Uh, what? if it's a player character, that's entirely up. Yeah, but if yeah, I want to let the dice them, go, but... then what? Uh... What would you what would you consider that? Um perception opposed insight? That's what oh, sorry, I uh, figured. Persuasion. Yeah, I put a yeah. So I rolled my persuasion. I mean, they're gonna see if they watch videos. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh yeah, he does that cool Yeah. Send all right. me all the information that you have on this god. You are now an NPC under the control of the <laughs> Yeah, dude, it was a crit 21. Versus a critical versus... failure. A natural <laughs> He was just waiting to mind. believe. He was just waiting to believe in anything. Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on, I want to I wanna take a pic of this. No. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be the best next session ever. 
my god. I'm gonna come out in fucking robes. Oh, baby. <laughs> Bro. He's the boss. He's the boss, guys. Take a level of clarity. This is how I became a monk. <laughs> <laughs> they cured my rage. It's all a prequel. Yeah. Anyways, we'll, we're about to end the session. Oh, so. okay, I think so too. oh my God. Uh, Kothar like walks off of Priestess Marisha and her company. Uh, Modest follows suit. Uh, Percival is tending to the mayor's wounds, for there were many. Bannon is rallying his men. The civilians are beginning to disperse about their normal days. People stood by the watch. Um, Leo finally returns. <laughs> That's right, he's been all fighting. <laughs> yep. All right, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not much, just getting downed by the captain of the guard. That's all, That's all Leo missed, was getting beat to fucking death. <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys feel like <coughs> yes. And then you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of you make your way to Golden Green Inn. Uh, like I said, Kothar is following the company. Oh, real quick, Golden Green in sheet. Oh, it is different. Yeah. Did you think it was going to be the same? I thought it was going to be. Wow. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think Dan was going to try it all, guys. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna be this is like an awesome place to start next time. Yep, you guys arrive at the Golden Green and it's very lively. Uh, and then I'll just take Kothar and company. Oh God. <laughs> to go get brainwashed. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna eat this shit up. Apparently. Oh man. Really tastes good. Let's move that over here. Show the crowd what's going on. Oh, shit. I like that it's all blacked out now. Yeah. yeah. People learn. Right. Yeah, now it is. Why is it so dark in here? <laughs> what are you going it's to do? In opaque black. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So we'll call the session right, there. Stop. <laughs>